up and making the regression a lot worse. I actually did start losing my milk. It was bad. It was why it was making me want to cry. Uh, About to leave. Already packing. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you clicked on this video, I feel for you because you're probably going through the rough right now. This is my second time going through a four month sleep regression. This time I was breastfeeding, so I added another hiccup, uh, so to speak. I think I figured out what you need to do in order to get past this very unfavorable time as quickly as possible. So if you need help and you want some new tips, keep watching because I think I got the ones for you. First and foremost, if you are going through the four month sleep regression, I am with you, mama. I have been there with you two times already. And I know how hard and frustrating it could be. Do not take the fact that my face has makeup and that it looks like I am well rested right now as a sign of your failure because this was actually filmed months after I survived the four month sleep regression. There is no way in heck uh, that I'd be looking um, any kinds of put together even remotely when this was going on. This was a very difficult time. And if you're going through this, don't worry, you're not alone. And there are tips that can help you get through this as fast as possible. First, we're going to discuss what the four month sleep regression is. Then we're going to discuss that if you are a breastfeeding mama, you might be actually doing something on accident that's causing this to get worse, which is something called reverse cycling. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry, we're gonna go through that too. And lastly, we're gonna go through what can you do? What changes can you implement to start seeing better sleep for your baby and for yourself? I got you, I got you girl, I got you. So first of all, the four month sleep regression is probably gonna be the first sleep regression that you experience out of very many sleep regressions to come. This four month sleep regression is probably gonna be the hardest that you and your baby are gonna go through because it is changing the way their brain works physically, biologically for sleep. When they were babies, they would go through baby sleep, which is very different than the way like our brains work when we sleep. Our brains are more in cycles and their brains are now at this point, four months, developmentally changing to go into sleep patterns more like every 60 to 120 minutes, which is every two hours. Uh, and then those cycles kind of repeat. So there is light sleep and then they, it kind of wakes them. Um, and then that's what you're experiencing if you're having multiple night wakings or sometimes really fussy, tired babies in the middle of the night that won't want to go back to sleep because they don't know uh, <laughs> what the heck is going on. And when they wake up and they kind of look at their surroundings and it's different than what it was when they first went to bed, it confuses them, it scares them, and it's just something that's happening. A sleep regression is always a sign of progression in brain development. And it's actually a good thing, even though it's a terrible for us that don't sleep. But around four months is when your baby starts to babble. They start to really vocalize and know their voice. They also start possibly rolling over from back to front and front to back. And they're possibly also starting solids, which is also a really new adventure. And it's something that their digestive system is learning how to do. It's the first thing outside of breast milk that they got introduced to. So there's like a lot of exciting things that are happening, but also biologically, and it could be causing these interruptions. So what you want to remember during this really hard time is that the sleep regression is completely normal. You are not doing anything wrong, but it will pass. Now, how do we make it pass faster, right? Let's get to that. If you're a breastfeeding mama, listen up, because this was something I did not know because I did not experience this with my first, I bottle fed her breast milk that I exclusively pumped for an entire year, even beyond that. So we did not experience this, but with my breastfeeding baby, I absolutely did. And I was actually messing it up and making the regression a lot worse. I never heard of reverse cycling before until I went to go seek out the help of a lactation consultant because I was losing my milk. And I was really freaking out that I was going to go dry and that I was not gonna be able to like make it to the year mark, which was our goal. And that's because my baby started waking up in the middle of the night to feed three times a night, sometimes four. It was bad. It was like, and they were like full feeds. Like they were taking like a half an hour long, like just really long feeds and just, they were full feeds. So my boobs would be super engorged at night. And then 
in the daytime, I wouldn't have that much milk and my baby wouldn't really be interested either. And this was around the time that I started introducing solids. So in my brain, I was like, well, maybe that he's getting calories from that and he's just not interested in breast milk as much, but that's absolutely not true. They're still supposed to be getting most of their caloric needs met through breast milk and all the other stuff is just like fun bonus things. So I, with my geniosity, wanted to take care of this myself. And I started trying to wean my baby from night feeds by just when he would wake up to try to feed, I would like feed him and then cut the feed short and then put a pacifier in his mouth and it would keep him asleep. So I was like, oh, thank gosh, he went down, like he stayed. And then the same thing would happen with the next feed and the next feed. I'd cut them short, I'd start feeding him his pacifier, but he wasn't compensating for the necessity of calories during the day. So then I actually did start losing my milk. My milk supply was going down quick, girl. It was like, my body was like, oh, we don't need all this milk? Okay, we're not gonna make it then. Nighttime or daytime, like nothing. And it was so traumatizing. Like I was pumping, I would pump to try to get some milk out during the day and nothing would come out at all. And I'm just like, oh, my god and then at night i wouldn't feel engorged anymore like i used to because i stopped those night feeds like cutting them this short it was really really scary and that's when i went to lactation and they told me okay no you need to just extend the feeds pushing them back time wise but do not cut them shorter because he still needs to meet his calorie needs and right now he's meeting them at night so reverse cycling is just when they're getting their calories met at night and not so much during the day and a couple reasons why this can happen is the most common one is that they take longer naps during the day. So during the day when they're getting those longer naps, you're probably prioritizing when you keep them awake that they're just more interested in things. They're seeing more activity. So they're less likely to want to be on the boob as long because they're getting distracted. And you kind of just move on because you just assume that, oh, they got what they needed and let's like play and do all the other things because we have a wake window to tend to now. And that is not what you're supposed to be doing. Um, those wake windows are supposed to be a little bit longer and in the day. And those naps are supposed to be cut shorter than, I mean, my baby was going for three hours, sometimes four. And I would just let him sleep because I thought, you don't wake a sleeping baby, right? False. You are absolutely supposed to wake a sleeping baby sometimes so that these things don't happen, like river cycling and etc. Um, so you really want to be prioritizing those daytime feeds and you want to make sure that there's at least the least amount of distractions as possible so that that way your baby can actually get a full meal out of you. What I started doing is I would pump and store my milk and then add it to like the puree mixture so that that way he would get calories during the day and not want to wake me at night. But also I'd be pumping during the day so I could be telling my boobs to produce during the day and not so much at night because then I didn't want to lose my milk and this was the goal. So I really had to work at trying to bring my milk supply back. We are beyond the year point and he's still breastfeeding. So we made it guys. Listen up, prioritize those day feeds, prioritize your day pumping. Yes, you will be exhausted because those midnight feeds are still gonna happen. Those weaning sessions are more like prolong the amount of time until he wakes up to feed. Well, he just woke up, so what do I do? Do the pacifier thing, do the like, you know, feed a little bit, but then cut it off and then give him a full feed like an hour later. It's going to be so exhausting, but you will get through this. The last tip that I will give you, and this might not be your cup of tea because I know a lot of people that are either co-sleeping or they have their baby still in the room with them, which is recommended. I mean, you're supposed to, I mean, I kept my baby in my room until um, he was six months old, seven months old. No, eight months old. No, 10 months old? Oh my gosh. Okay, this brain is already like erasing things because it's like, girl, we, we don't wanna forget about that. That was traumatizing, it was scary, it was crazy. We survived, but we don't wanna go back there. <laughs> and then at four months, I made it a priority to only sleep him at night, any nap, anything like that, in his crib, his bassinet next to me, but just like not on me and away from me and whatever. And all the things. Um, sometimes like in the middle of the night, like he would start in the bassinet and then I'd bring him into bed with me to like breastfeed him. And then I would just let him go into that little cot, the safe sleep cot or whatever, which no cot is actually safe sleep in the U.S. at least it's not approved for safe sleep. But sometimes you get desperate and you're like, I'm going to do what I got to do to survive. And like the baby would sleep in bed with us. And like, um, 
yeah, I stopped that at four months because they sleep so much better when they're independent. And especially if they're able to like roll and stuff, like it's just a lot safer for them to be on their own. So make sure that those wake windows are going now a little longer instead of the one and a half hour wake windows. You want more like a two hour wake window, especially that first one, like two hours, no more than. And then the middle one, like three hours at the most. And then, you know, you kind of want to just start slowly extending those wake windows. Do it at a 15 minute increment at a time because 15 minutes isn't enough for their brain to go oodle looped, but it is enough time to start edging towards the wake windows that you want, the desirable ones for this age. The thing that I think did the biggest difference from getting out of this four month sleep regression hell was putting them in an a nighttime routine, so to speak, starting a routine to kind of tell their brains, to kind of tell them that this is what we do and this is what we do next and then it's sleep. So whatever that routine looks like to you, and it might be stupid, like I had to put implement things that we would do because we didn't have a routine. We would just do what we always do. We breastfeed, I put them down and that's it. But now we had to add things that kind of make it like a ritual, so to speak, a sleep time ritual to like let their little brains know like, hey, get ready. We're going to go to sleep. And it could be as simple as I'm putting you in your pajamas. I'm going to rub some lotion on your legs. I'm going to read you a book, give you your pacifier and put you to sleep. Um, for me, it was, I, I did that. And then I think I had it complicated just a little bit more to have more steps or more pronounced steps for my baby to know that it was time for the big sleep, which is the nighttime sleep. The one that you're supposed to be down for that is very, very different than the naps. I would not do this routine with the naps, but I do it with the nighttime, the big sleep routine. So, um, what I would do is I would walk into the room, turn on the sound machine. There's a tiny little light. That's like a little like starlight kind of situation. I would turn that on. So it would not be the regular light that turns on in the room. It's a lot dimmer and it kind of sets the mood. I put him in his pajamas. I rubbed lotion on his legs. I'd read him two or three books and then I'd say, okay, all done. It's time to go to sleep. And the sound machine is still on. Um, and I would turn off the little twinkle light that's in the corner and then it was like pitch black in there. Then that's when I would uh, breastfeed him and put him to bed with his pony. Pony is pacifier, that's what we call it in our household, but the pacifier. And all of a sudden, I think it took like four or five days. It was less than a full week. It took about a business week for this baby to just start going like, okay, so like, yeah, I'm going to start extending my, uh, my time sleep. I guess this is uh, different. It's a different sleep than the daytime one. And it only started with like the first stretch was like three and a half hours, which was big for us. Okay. At this time, like it was like, oh, it, he didn't wake me up in an hour and a half after putting him down. Like, that's cool. That's crazy. And then after that one, he would wake me up an hour and a half later. And then an hour and a half later after that. And then it was like time to start the day. But that three and a half hour sleep, girl, that stretch was nice. Especially if you haven't experienced one in a long time and you don't know what it's like to sleep for three hours straight. Let me tell you. It's freaking nice. But it was so crazy how crucial establishing a nighttime routine is for their brains to kind of start knowing there's like a pattern and then there's sleep. There's a pattern and then following that is the big sleep. All right, guys, those are all the tips that I have for you today. If you are going through reverse cycling, please consult a consultant, a lactation consultant before you start losing your milk like I did. Um, prioritize that milk, honey, especially if you, your goal is to reach the year mark or even further out, you want to protect your milk supply. Mine has always been super fragile. I know some women that are like, oh, a light breeze touches my nipple and I just start leaking through my shirts and I just have so much milk all the time, every day. That was never me. That's never been me in both of my breastfeeding journeys. Uh, I've never produced that much breast milk, nor was it that easy for me to produce an abundance. I was never an overproducer or anything like that. Um, and you could hear the stress in my voice. Um, and it's okay if you're not too. Uh, that doesn't mean anything. It just means you're just not an overproducer and it's going to take a lot more work. It's going to be a lot harder for you to keep your milk and to keep your milk supply going uh, 
than it is for others. And it, it's very frustrating. Uh, but you're not alone. You're not alone. Anyway, um, I don't know why that's making me want to cry. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. If motherhood and lifestyle content is your jam and you're a mama to be and you want to know more about what to expect, um, I make videos on here all about the newborn stage, the toddler phase, things that mothers go through, uh, breast milk supply, items that your baby might need, all the things. So if that sounds like your jam, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and join the fam. And I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button because that tells YouTube that somebody out there liked this video and that therefore they should try to push it out to more mamas like you. So uh, yeah, I'd really appreciate that guys. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye. You glue all the pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better Yeah, you